Hey everyone, it's the human equivalent of hockey hair and head of sandbox development over at Alpacadabras Phil here. Today's video is going to be a short introduction into VoxEdit. This isn't PACA specific, it's more about just walking through some of the basics you need to understand in creating a skeleton or a rig, creating a VXM and, and how to animate that. So it's a very, very simple look at, uh, at VoxEdit functionality. There's another video where we get into more detail with PACA assets in particular, but I thought for those who wanted just a little bit more um, background into how VoxEdit works and an, an overview, this would be helpful. So there you go. This is the main screen that um, comes up, or at least a version of this, um, depending on where we're at in the Vox Edit cycle. There are a few choices down the side, you know, news, new things that are coming out. The modeler, um, this is where if you needed to make changes just to the VXM, which is the um, individual asset, the pieces. So if you're looking at a, a PACA, it is the head, the neck, the body. Those individual pieces are called VXMs. Those VXMs connect into a skeleton, uh, a rig is what we'd call it in the 3D space, um, and that is called a VXR. And so those VXMs connect to the skeleton in the VXR, and we create animations, and those are called VXAs, right? And those animations say, based on the pivot points on the skeleton, here's what this object, here's what the head is doing, here are the keyframes, the positions in space, how it moves around, right? And that VXR, VXM, VXA sort of combination is what an asset is in the sandbox. We also have a, the ability to create blocks, so very similar to Minecraft. Um, you know, ground blocks, wall blocks, water, uh, just transparencies. We're not going to get into that today, um, but that's a, a helpful tool. And then templates, and there's a ton of great templates within the sandbox. And you'll, um, you know, I encourage you guys to jump in and, and mess around with some of these at some point. Tutorials that I'm putting together here are very um, specific to your packas, right? In general, so if you need some more in-depth on animations, on the templates, on just the basics of the modeler, this is a great place to start to kind of show you how things work. The work that um, that we're going to be doing is really about the models that you downloaded. But that being said, let's just jump into the animator. So we click on the animator tab, um, and we're going to create a new asset, and we can save that wherever we want to save it, right? So I'm going to save it here, and I'm going to call it um, I'll call it ugly block, because that's what we're going to make. We're going to make an ugly block. So this is this is it, the blank canvas. What do you want to do with this? So at the end of the day, there's like I said, three parts to this: the skeleton, the VXMs, the pieces that connect to the skeleton, and the animation. This open space here, and the movement is pretty simple. You're going to want a three-button mouse. Um, Clicking the right button actually selects stuff, and as we have pieces here, you'll be able to select. The left button moves sort of in a 360 around whatever object you have selected, and the middle button moves you up, down, left, and right, unconnected to that pivot point. So this is our skeleton sort of system. We are gonna create child nodes, and, and think of nodes as a tree of connectivity. So as parent nodes create children nodes, when the parent node moves, the child node moves with it. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. But so within the sandbox, every um, asset has a, a shared node, right? And uh, we create that child node. It's called the controller node. This node does not change. We don't do things with it, at least not at this point. There are some ways and some benefits to changing things. But at this point, it is sort of the base that all of the children nodes um, are created from. So we have the root. The controller and from there we're going to create one more child node we're going to call this box and so right now there's nothing in box it is a skeleton it's, it's uh bones without any meat right so we're going to create some some meat for these bones so you have vxms and, and box files vxms are the files you're going to create within box edit um vox files are from magic of voxel so you can import things that you make Right now, let's just focus on what we can do with in box edit. And so creating a new VXM is a plan, and we're going to call this box. These names don't have to match. It's just helpful as you um, connect the pieces back and forth to know what you're making and where it goes. So this is box. Your starting place for all asset builds within the sandbox is um, a 32 by 32 
by 32 voxel block. And this with this height of 32 voxels is the same as one meter um, in real life. Real life, I guess you'd say, right? It's the equivalent of, of one meter. And so everything you do and all of the blocks that you drop in, sort of Minecraft styles or terraforming, are all on that same um, path, right? Or on that same configuration. So as you look at this, there's a few things to probably take note of. The first is this arrow. This arrow is facing forward. So you know, as you, you know, make whatever asset it is, if it needs to be facing a certain way, this arrow gives you directions as to what the front of it is. And then there's also a uh, pivot point. So this pivot point is when you put this asset on the skeleton and you say here, rotate this number of degrees or um, you know this way or move along one of the axes, the pivot point is a place where that action happens. So for a lot of assets, your best bet is to have them centered and at the bottom. And so, you know, by default, it spawns in centered. You can right click here and set it to center. Now it's in the middle of everything, right? But we want it on the ground because this box is going to sit on the ground. So we also, we set to center. Now we're going to set to floor. So you can take a look. 32 is our width. This thing is sitting at 16. 32 is our depth. It's at 16. Our height is 32, but this box is sitting at zero. It's on the floor here. So the tools along the side, you've got um, a Tetris looking piece that is to actually create and draw in voxels, right? So if I just hold on the mouse and I scribble something out, I am drawing in this space one voxel at a time. The paint tool does exactly what it looks like it does. It paints over existing um, colors. And right now there's nothing in here to paint, so it, it won't do anything. And this is an erase tool. So if we had voxels in here, and I'll show you, this removes voxels. The line tool draws a straight line. So if I needed to go from one corner to the other, and I want to be on the voxel create tool. The easy way to do that is drag and hold, and you now get voxels spread straight across an asset, right? Oops, I made a little mistake there. Um, this is a select tool, but this piece does squares. You can drag in, you can drag out, you can just drag sort of a flat bit of space and really nice to sort of fill spaces. Um, this is a face tool. So as we think about this being the bottom of the asset, we wanted to fill up, let's say, you know, two or three voxel size, one, two, three. This goes one layer at a time. Finally, this tool here, this is our bucket tool and literally just fills the space with whatever color you have. So I'm going to pick this sort of yellow and I'm actually going to make it a little uglier. And boom, we have a bright yellow box. So we feel good about that. We're gonna go back and hit um, the backwards button. It's gonna prompt us to save. We're gonna say yes. And um, we have a box, we have a, a piece, a model. We have a skeleton that's got a box uh, space. And I literally just drag this across and drop it in here. And now you have a box in space, right? Um, the arrow shows you where to go and this pink and blue lines show you exactly where the um, center of the world is. And so now since we set our box to have a pivot point at the base and at the center box, the box sits on the floor and it lines up with the base and center. Now I'm gonna go back and the pencil tool that works on either side, I click the pencil tool. The nice part about on the skeleton side is if, if you click the pencil tool, you'll see other assets or the shadow of them. We don't have any in this space. But just to show you um, why that arrow is important, we're gonna pick a little darker color here. And I'm gonna put on the mirror tool, right? These are mirroring, so this mirrors down the red axis, this one um, green and blue. And in this case, we want to, I'm gonna hit three, which is a shortcut for the, um, the shortcut for the paint tool. And I'm gonna draw and look, because we have the mirror tool on, we are putting some eyeballs on this block and the arrows facing this way. So this is the front of the block. I'm gonna switch over to this lighter color, make it a little bit closer to a white. And I'm just gonna fill in this eyeball. And actually I want to add a color and to add is just the plus here. Um, and a very dark color, which is right here. Maybe it's a blue, maybe they got blue eyes. How about that? I'm gonna press three, make sure I'm on paint. Oh, it's 
it's a very nice looking eyes. I'm gonna go back to this. Um, if you tap I, it's the same as the eyedropper tool down here. It'll pick whatever the most recent color is. I'm gonna use the line tool and I'm gonna draw something that kind of looks like this. A little bit of a smile up. And we're just gonna put a mouth on this block here, right? And because I have that, um, because I have this mirror tool selected, both sides always match and it's pretty slick. So um, we're gonna draw once again with that same pencil tool, some teeth in here. I think the teeth should line up relatively straight. Oops, if I make a mistake, it's control Z like anything else. Um, some pink, they got some real pink gums. And um, some teeth at the bottom. In the middle, I'm gonna pour in this dark black. And once again, I'm gonna use this bucket tool and it's set to three. Whoops, and that's totally not the right tool to use. I'm gonna use this face tool. Um, and that's gonna fill this in. And I think I'm gonna draw a tongue, a small sort of tongue thing here. So this is actually a pretty happy block. Um, it needs some bags under its eyes. So I'm gonna press I on the keyboard. I'm gonna, um, so it selects this yellow. If I hit add a new color, it adds the color that you had selected, which is really nice if you're trying to get some subtle changes. And I am on three, I am on the pencil tool. I'm just gonna draw kind of a bag under this thing's eyes. I like that. I'm gonna draw a little shadow under his chin. His or her chin. I'm not. I guess this isn't a. I'm not gonna gender the the block. And they are. They're surprised about something. So they're gonna have some surprise brows, as I call them. Uh, these are mad brows, right? When they go in. This is unibrows. <laughs> they're one. And surprise brows generally go up. And so. They're a little surprised about something. And maybe it's because they have a giant pig nose. That might help us. It's a little too dark of a pink. I'm just gonna lighten that up a little bit. There we go. And um, I'm gonna pick a different color I haven't used yet and go even darker. I'm gonna put some nose holes in this thing. Kind of like that. There we go. Let's make this block look a little bit weirder. And realize if you hit the eye button, the eyedropper, and you click on your color, if you change it on the palette, everything changes. So, you know, this is good and bad. It's good if you're trying to change a, a large mass of color, but just be aware as you're picking and using colors that it's not that. It's pretty easy to accidentally um, change all the colors. I'm gonna hit eye one more time. One more piece to this tongue. Okay, I'm feeling good about that. So now when we're gonna hit back, we're gonna save this, and you're gonna see that the front of the block is facing forward. So, great, we have a block. We have an animation called Idle. I'm gonna rename this animation, and I'm gonna call it Move. I'm gonna put 01 at the end. Um, the numbering system's important for Game Maker, and so we always add a number. So if we had multiple moves, it would be Move 01, Move 02, Move 03. Um, so move 01 is our is our name right here and I think that the action we want to do is gonna be very simple it's gonna be a one second loop and we want this box to move forward and come back to its space and so an important part about animation especially loops is you want to make sure the first frame and the last frame are the same because then they loop seamlessly and a really easy way to do that is if you're thinking about it ahead of time and you know the length of your animation, and in this case we do, we want it to be one second, you can, um, you wanna go into the controller because you need all of your nodes to be at the same distance, right? So we click on the controller that shows us our two nodes as a controller in the box. And this tool right here, um, there might be a, a it says key, uh, create new keyframe for all nodes. I click on that and what this is saying is from frame one to frame 24, the, the, the length it takes is one second, there is no change. This pink color right here shows you that there is no change. If I go midway through that pink and I click on this box, I've given two options. I'm given a, a move node, right, which kind of moves me 
up, down, left, right, and, and forward. And I'm just making sure that this is back where it needs to be, zero, zero, zero. And then I also have a rotate node. So this rotate node, rotate node is gonna spin. And you can see as it spins in this case, it's spinning along that pivot point, along the bottom. Imagine there's like a, a piece of glue there, right? And so same as we look at this kind of spin, it is going to spin a very specific way because of how the, um, what we did to the, the pivot point. So in this case, halfway through our animation, all I want to do, and I don't, you'll see I don't have to animate every single frame, I'm going to have this go, and if I hold down shift, that snaps you to a solid number of um, voxels. And we talked about 32 voxels is one um, block length. And so I'm going to move this guy or this girl, this, this block, 32 voxels forward. And look what happens down here. Automatically, the um, Vox edit assigns an animation. And this straight line means it's linear. It takes exactly the same amount of distance between every frame to make that. And so if I hit play on the keyboard, look at that. It loops perfectly back and forth that um, that head moves. Now we could also add some sort of uh, rotation as well and the same thing's gonna happen. Let's say this box is gonna is going to tilt let's have it tilt up a little bit, right? Now part of the issue here is in Game Maker this is going to cut into the ground. You can see where now it doesn't Game Maker will allow you to do this. Um, it just, you need to be aware of where the ground plane is. And for some reason, if this is going to look strange or odd and you don't want this to happen, well, you'll need to adjust your, your asset. And maybe we'll do that, actually. Let's move this up. And so I'm going to move our asset up so that it's no longer hitting the, the or crossing the ground plane. And as you look at this, look what happens. Those, the animation is, is um, created for us. And I'm going to hit play. And this thing moves on its own, back and forth, endlessly, forever. So our animation is done. We've understood how some keyframes work, what happens between them. You can experiment with the type of, I think it's called tweening, between the animation and the keyframes. Like, how is it treated? So right now with linear, every increment every frame has the exact same amount of motion so it's equal so it feels very um, consistent as it moves back and forth back and forth you could change this so that the uh, animation started out slow and then went very fast at the end which is what this means and then on the other side let's have it start out um, very fast and then go slow. And so you'll see how this changes pretty dramatically what the action looks like. Whoop, whoop, right? And so it's ramping up to go to the first keyframe and the first keyframe is already moving quickly and then it slows down at the end. And so you can see how there's some very interesting things you can do with this because it gives more natural uh, motion. Most things in your life tend to start out slow move quickly and then slow down again so as i look at changing this now this is kind of a slow fast slow a more intense and a more gradual slow fast slow and i'll set the same uh setting to this and watch it'll kind of slowly and the in between part will move there'll be a lull in the middle and it'll come back and it's a little bit harder to see here because this animation is um pretty short but there's sort of a gradual pause here. And so I'm gonna go back to how we originally had it though, which is a linear move between the two of them. And you can mix these, right? You could have it linear up front and you could have a, um, a more sloped back end. And you'll see like it kind of goes forward and it speeds up at the end. And once again, as you get into more complex animations, this is easier to notice, but um, right now we've got a box, moves back and forth. It has an animation name. Um, and you put a skeleton together, you put a, a rig. So you're, you're pretty far along already in just the you know, couple minutes we took to do this. So I'm gonna save this asset. 
and you'll find it back in your animator, right? So in the future, you can go and find your ugly block and we can do something with it. So hopefully this was a helpful introduction to some of the basics of Vox Edit. Like I said, if you go online to the Sandboxes site or just YouTube in general, there's plenty of other things that dive in in more detail, but I wanted to give you a quick overview if you were um, looking through our tutorials. And then um, I'm gonna get back in the next one into putting our Steve Wilberry, our tough guy Paco with a ear piercing, uh, into Game Maker and giving him some behaviors and traits. So, hope this was helpful. Thanks.